Okay, guys, welcome back again. This is the last lecture in our course. So this is lecture number nine, which is the last one. Okay. Uh, today we have the control, which is the last phase, last step in the demand. We finish define, we define our problem, and then we came to the measure. We measure our problem, what is the effect uh, of, the, uh, of the problem, and then we analyze the problem and we get the root cause or the axis. And then in the improve, we find the solution. We implement the solution according to uh, some kind of uh, criteria and filtering of the solution. And then now, after you make all of this, after you've done all this job during your project uh, period, whatever, six months, one year, then you need to control. Then whatever you have been done, you need to be uh, uh, keep it in a uh, sustainable, sustainable way to keep it uh, uh, under control and uh, also to keep the continuous improvement uh, culture. So the control phase, which is the last, as I mentioned, the demand cycle, uh, control is more about sustaining. Sustaining means keep everything smoothly going, keep everything uh, 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 with the uh, continuous improvement. So whatever you have been done, now you need to control it. You, now you need uh, to observe it. Now you need uh, to make it sustainable so you cannot go back to the, uh, to the start point. Also, sustains means improve the new solution implemented. Uh, after you implement new solution, we call it, uh, we call it gains or uh, profit or revenues. So whatever the term you will use, but you need in the control phase, you need to hold on these gains. So you need to stick on these gains. No need to go back to the start point. Uh, as we mentioned before, you need uh, to be sure the uh, uh, continuous improvement methodology has to be adopted. So this is a new culture for the company. So before you leave, please make sure everything is uh, sustainable, uh, everything uh, under control, so that uh, this company will not go back to the start point. Uh, second thing, control, it's about monitoring the process on ongoing basis activities. Uh, so, now it's the time for only monitoring the process, what you have been done, what you have been restructuring during your project. So monitoring the process, this is a job of uh, uh, your quality manager. He will, he will bring his seat and stay here in the control phase. Your uh, internal auditors, they will sit here. What they will do, they will do uh, observing the process. They will sit here in the control phase. They are observing the process. They will make their uh, 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 report about how the process is going, how the development is going, uh, if it is sustainable or not. So this is a time for uh, monitoring the process. In control phase, we are not going to do anything uh, except only monitoring uh, the process. Also, we call it the uh, uh, transition, transition period, what, uh, or transition uh, for, from the process, uh, from the uh, uh, project to the process. So whatever you have done, now you will convert it into process. And then the whole of the company, they have to be a discipline for this, uh, for this process and uh, for this procedure. So, the output of this slide now, the control phase, it is all about sustain. Control phase, it is all about monitoring uh, the process. Control phase, it's about transition from the project 
uh, uh, doing to the uh, process uh, approach. This is what uh, we call it in control. So control, all is about uh, uh, monitoring uh, the data uh, variation or uh, what we call it uh, dispersion. The, the data variation we spoke about before, we said there is a two kinds of, uh, of variation. If you remember, uh, we spoke about the common cause variation. You remember guys, and we spoke about the special cause variation. And we said the, the most characteristic about the common cause variation, which is always represent something you are doing uh, usually in the daily basis. So this is, we call it common, uh, common cause. Also it's uh, expected and normal and acceptable. Uh, also there is no uh, big effect or there is a little effect of the common cause. Uh, also, it is very difficult to identify because it's it's not something that you can identify easy and even uh, difficult to eliminate. So since it cannot be identified, that means it is not easy to eliminate. And the second, we have the uh, special cause variation, which is something is not always represented. Something is not always is happening. You are used to come every day uh, 7.30 to your office, but somehow you came at 8.30. Uh, at that means there is something happening uh, uh, during your uh, uh, driving to the office. So this is, we call it a uh, special cause variation, which is uh, unexpected and uh, even it's not normal. And also it's a few cases, uh, it's not always happening. Uh, means uh, there is a large effect of that. Uh, uh, we strike a, a sample if you have a target of doing uh, 10 sales order uh, per day within the uh, eight hour of your duty. So if you come late, that means you will not be able to achieve your target, which is uh, 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 a 10 uh, sales order per day. So there is an effect, there is an impact on the special cause. Also, it is easy to identify because if you if you if you look to your, the the rest of your week, there is only one day you came late, so it is easy to identify, and so it is easy to eliminate. This is this is a summary. Just refresh uh, uh, our memory about the two type of uh, variation. Uh, yesterday also we discussed uh, the uh, control chart. Uh, the control chart, which is, has been invented by uh, Walter Andrew, uh, Andrew or Charter or Chart. So yes, we will go to the Excel again. Yes, yes, we will have uh, uh, to refresh our memory regarding the control uh, charts. So as I mentioned last time, the control chart we will be used in a control phase, but in big uh, in big scale. And here we have many types of control uh, chart. Uh, last last time we spoke about the control chart, but one one type of the control chart. Now we will know how many control chart uh, types we have, but we are not going to discuss. Just to know how many you have. Why we will tell you that? Because we need to prepare you for the green. So once you reach the green, you will use it. Uh, all the types of uh, uh, control chart. So just to refresh our memory. So we said the control chart, it's about uh, UCL, which is the uh, upper control limit. And we have the LCL, which is the lower control limit. And we have the mean, which is the, mid, uh, the middle of the data. So your data, it has to be uh, uh, between the UCL and the LCL. So since you have your data in between the UCL and NCL, that uh, sorry uh, LCL, that means you are on the safe side. That means you are your process, your procedure is going smoothly, and um, this is a good indicator that your team they are doing well. Uh, but in case, in case if you have something happening during uh, uh, during your day, uh, as we mentioned, this is. 
this is a fridge. We take it as a sample out of many fridges that we have uh, within our warehouses. And we took, uh, as this is uh, temperature uh, for one month. So as we mentioned before, since it is between the UCL and LCL, that means you are in the uh, common cause variation. But in case something happened like this, so that means you are out uh, of control. So you need to go back to the normal. You need to go back and check what is the cause of this uh, big uh, uh, special cause variation. So you need to eliminate it. So as we mentioned, it is easy to eliminate. Since it is out of the UCL, that means something wrong. So it is easy to identify and easy uh, to eliminate and you need to work uh, on this one. So uh, here, the control chart, uh, just also it is, it is a refresh, but here there is some uh, terms we need to emphasize. So this term, it will be definitely, definitely you will have it in the exam, whatever from the special cause or the uh, uh, common cause. Let me go here. As I mentioned, uh, let me go back to the same. As I mentioned, this is what we call it. This is, we call it a uh, common cause, okay? Common cause means we are still uh, in the safe side. We are uh, very good in our process. We are very good in our uh, procedure and our team is doing well. So, uh this is what we call it since you are in the uh, in the common cause in the common cause that means you are in control okay that means also the process is stable also this is a uh, this is a very common uh, term you are using uh, under control so since you are in the ucl between the ucl and lcl that means you are under control or again within common cause variation. So this is uh, five terms or four terms you are using for uh, uh, representative or representing the common cause variation. So the common cause variation, it's along all data between the UCL and the LCL. What is mean? It is mean that you are uh, your data under control or process is stable or we can say under uh, in, in control or within the common cause uh, variation. On the right hand, we have the special cause variation. So if the data, something happened and your data goes out of the UCL, what that means? That means you have a special cause. Also, we can say you are out of control point. Okay, and this is this is very common uh, use out of control point. So special cause totally is the opposite of the of the common cause. So since your data goes out of the UCL, or even even it's not only UCL, it can be uh, it can be the UCL, the LCL, for example. Now your data is going down uh lcl so that means something happened here you need to take action you need uh what we said it's monitoring monitoring observing the process so this is the job uh for uh quality manager for the internal auditors for uh, whatever the, 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 the whom we will check and re rechecking the the process inside your company okay so anything between out of UCL and LCL, we call it a special cause variation. So special cause variation, we can, uh, we can say it's a special cause or we can say it's out uh, of control. So we have here a question. What is the difference between control limit and specification limit? There is a two term. There is a uh, we call it control limit and there is a specification limit. Control limit is coming from the data. 
So if your data has been changed for positive or negative uh, indicators, that means control limit. So you are controlling or you are not controlling. This is coming from the data. So the the uh, the numbers will come out from the data. It will tell you you are in control or you are out of control. Control limit is coming from the was from the data. So what is the specification limit? The specification limit is, is given by the customer uh, 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 expectation or by the customer need. You remember the first in the first lecture we spoke about. Uh, the main target in for the uh, uh, Six Sigma project is uh, customer satisfaction. And we said if any company, any, uh, any kind of business, customer satisfaction is not his main goal. So this business should be shut down or closed and release all the employees, so no need. So the, the customer satisfaction, this is the main output of your uh, of your Six Sigma project. So the, the specification limit, you will take it from your customer. So your customer will say, I need a cell phone or mobile with only one, one camera. Okay, so you will build your uh, production line in order to, to uh, uh, manufacture a mobile with one camera. Okay, the technology has been Change. There is a new technology is coming. Now, now the customer he need mobile with the three cameras. So now you need to reprocess. You need to to make uh, internal change in order to meet the customer uh, expectation and customer need. So you need to fulfill the customer need. So this is what we call it a specification limit, and uh, other side we call it control limit. So control limit is coming from your data whatever the, 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 uh, the readness or whatever the numbers is coming from your data, this is the control limit. So whatever is coming from the customer uh, needs or customer uh, expectation, this is, we call it uh, a specification uh, limit. Okay. So now how many control uh, charts we have? And depends on what you will use which one of them. We have seven types of uh, uh, a control chart. So what is this seven and when we will use? We have something called IMR chart. We have something called X bar R. We have something called X bar S. So don't bother yourself. What you need to know here in the in the uh, yellow belt, only the names. We are not going to discuss in details. Only the names, and you need to know when you will use it. So when I will go to the mini tab and select X bar, or when I will use uh, IMR chart. Okay, here we'll tell you. You will use IMR chart or the X bar or the X. Uh, bar S, when your data is about continuous data. Do you remember, guys? This is the two types of data. We said there is a, there is a six type of data fall on the category of continuous data, and there is another six fall on the category of the discrete data. So which one you will use here? IMR or X bar or you can use any one of them, any one of this, when your data is continuous data. After you make identification, you determine your data and you find that your data is continuous. Continuous means one of them. It is a temperature or distance or weight, height, price, time. So if you have any type of data within these six categories, that means you will use one of these three control charts. So what about the other? What this is, if your data discrete, if you have a discrete data, which is uh, falling on one of this one, percentage or debatable data or, 
ordinal data or uh, nominal data. So you will use MP or the P or the C or the U. What is this one? This is the types of control chart. So when I will use MP or P or C, you will use it after you determine your data, which data you have. You have discrete data, you will go for this four, one of them. You have continuous data, you will use this uh, one of these three. Okay, guys, clear? We have seven types of control chart. These seven types, we will use it depends on the types of data we have. So how many types of data we have? We have two types of data. So what's this two? We have the continuous data and we have the discrete data. So how I will differentiate between them? How I know this is a continuous or this is a discrete? We told you here, if it is one of these six in the, in the right, you, data is continuous since your data is continuous then you will use uh, one of these three no my data is uh, percentage that means discrete discrete yes okay come here discrete you will use one of these four uh, uh, control chart uh, types okay guys okay uh, within within the control chart, within the variation, within the common cause or special cause variation, we have something called uh, variable, and we have something called uh, continuous. What means by by variable? What means by continuous? We have something called ratio. We have something called interval. So what is this? This is types of uh, uh, dispersion of uh, or types of uh, uh, what we call it uh, uh, cause or special cause or common cause variation. So this is type of variation. You have it type or one of the type of the uh, dispersion dispersion we have. So variables means variables means something changeable, something always uh, being changed. So you have a changeable uh, variation. So changeable variation, but uh, also we call it, it is, it is not fixed. Not fixed means changeable, means variable. Okay. Uh, ratio, ratio means something calculate, something we can calculate uh, by certain, uh, uh, any, any kind of measure, uh, percentage or any type of measure, you can, you can use it. This is what we mean by ratio. So the, the, the variation you have, it will be variable, then it will be ratio. That means the variation, the dispersion you have, it is changeable, but in the same times, it can be calculated. It can be measured. It can be calculated by percentage or by temperature or by any kind of measure that you will use. It. So this is what we mean by variable equal ratio or ratio equal uh, variable. So we have a continuous. Continuous means uh, something being taken daily. So if you if you remember here, this is the fridge and this is the temperature for the fridge. And this is the temperature we are taking daily. So daily we are taking the temperature for this fridge. This is, we call it continuous. So continuous is the data that has been taken uh, uh, daily, or we call it interval. Interval means there is a, a period of time. So through some duration of time, you will take uh, uh, these uh, uh, types of data. So what means? You will take it a continuous in the daily basis. Every day you will take, but within uh, uh, a period of time. So here, maybe you will take it in the first day. If you will take it morning, the second day you will take it evening. This is take it afternoon and so on. So what we mean by continuous, we mean by continuous, it's interval. Interval means uh, there is the same period uh, or break time 
or time break between the first uh, uh, data has been taken and the second data it has been uh, taken. So in the exam, in the exam, he will give you four examples, these two, ratio and interval. You suppose to find these two in the, in the choices. Or well, opposite, he will give you the variable and continuous in the question. And then you have to find where is ratio and interval in the multi choice. Okay, guys. Now we have something called uh, nine concept of lean. Okay, we discussed about the first lecture we said uh, lean six sigma is about uh, combining between lean and six sigma. So six sigma is about uh, 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 quality school or quality management, and lean it's about uh, uh, management to school or management uh, concept. So there is a nine concept of lean. So we need to uh, uh, check this nine concept. First of all, who is behind uh, lean? Who is uh, inventing the lean? You remember we said six sigma is coming from who, who is a, who is the father of six sigma? You remember, guys? The father of six sigma. What is his name? Before I complete, Billy Smith, correct? Billy Smith, not Will Smith. Billy Smith. So Billy Smith is the father of six sigma. So who inventing the lean? Inventing the lean, these two uh, Japanese, they are working in Toyota. Uh, first one, I hope, I, I hope the pronunciation it will be uh, correct, but you have you can Google it and get that correct one. Yeah, Tahishi Ono, and the second one is Shinju uh, Shingo. I hope so. These two guys, they are behind the uh, existing of lean management, or they uh, the, these two guys they inventing the lean management. So, what is the concept of the lean management? Number one. The concept of the lean, number one, there is many companies have attempted to uh, eliminate the Toyota model of lean operation. Okay. Uh, uh, the lean, it's invented in Toyota, but uh, with the knowledge that everybody now, now knew, uh, uh, knew about uh, lean management and everybody want to implement the lean management inside his organization but somehow somehow many of them they are not success of implementing the lean management uh, in their company so why why this one is happening because uh, what does analysis that after we make analysis we find that uh, toyota operation indicate the primary reason for the success with the lean uh, invented because they have a culture of practicing uh, the scientific method uh, all level of their workplace so the key point here is the culture so why toyota only they are success uh, on implementing lean management and other companies they are not uh, succeed on implementing the lean management. The only difference is the culture. So they have culture of, of practicing the scientific method. Okay. This is the only uh, uh, difference between the uh, uh, Toyota and other companies that they, they try to, to imitate uh, uh, Lean Six Sigma, uh, or they try to implement the lean management within their uh, companies or within their uh, organization. The only difference is the culture of practicing the scientific method. You remember in the first lecture we said uh, there is a three uh, elements of uh, elements of uh, Lean Six Sigma. One of them is a mind's culture. What means mind culture need to do something 
to keep all the levels of the workforce or the uh, manpower, they have a culture of continuous improvement. They have a culture of, uh, of discovering uh, the mistakes, discovering the errors within the process so they can eliminate it without uh, interfere with the middle or the top uh, uh, management. So this culture, it has been adopted inside the uh, Toyota company. So they are succeed, they are successful on uh, lean management uh, uh, implementation. Number two, uh, Toyota believes uh, the operational efficiency can be measured against the benchmark in process. So what is the benchmark? Benchmark means uh, we can say role model. So for example, if we ask you, who is the best football player? You will say Messi or Ronaldo. Okay. Messi or Ronaldo will call them benchmark on football. Okay. If I ask you, what is the best company on uh, e-commerce? You will say Amazon. So Amazon is the benchmark of the e-commerce. Uh, another example, if we said who is the benchmark or who is the top on, uh, uh, we can say the solar energy, not solar energy, uh, the electric, electric car. Tesla. Tesla, yes, you are good. So Tesla is the benchmark on the electric cars. Uh, for example, the normal cars. Who is the benchmark? BMW, Mercedes, or Ford? We can say, uh, for example, uh, Mercedes. So this is what we mean by benchmark. So Toyota believes the operational efficiency, okay? It can be measured against the benchmark. So if you want to measure your internal operational, if it is, uh, give you high efficiency or not. So you need to measure it against one benchmark. So if you want to, to know your skills in football, you need to measure it against Messi or Ronaldo. So you can use, you can know which level you are uh, playing with. If you have an e-commerce company, so you need to measure against benchmark. You need to find where is the benchmark for the e-commerce. If you are selling any, any type of product, this product existing in the market. So there is a one company uh, leading this product inside the, 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 the Saudi Arabia. So you need to measure yourself, uh, not against anybody in the, in the market, but against the, who is the benchmark, who is, the, who is in the top. So the one who is in the top, you can uh, measure yourself again in that, uh, that company. So this is what we mean by, uh, by the benchmark. Concept number three, Toyota believes that there is a large number of potential human, human errors. So we are a human. So there is a errors. And each process there is an error. And you remember I told you in one uh, uh, our lecture, you have to be spiritual or you have to be doubt. You have to doubt uh, as a professional uh, Six Sigma uh, certificate certified. You have to doubt all the process, all the procedure you have in, uh, in your company. So what that means? That means because there is a human errors uh, always uh, present. So the human errors, this is what, what Toyota believes. The human errors will be uh on each of your process so the the possible uh countermeasure for uh inexperience is to have something we call it visual aids uh at the work uh instruction what means by visual aid see in in some uh, uh factories the process until you get the final product, okay? The steps, uh, uh, this raw material, we will put it in this machine, and then it has to be taken. From this machine, we will put it in the second machine, 
in the third until you get the final product. So what Toyota they are doing? Toyota they are doing this one in a big project, big screen. It will be uh, installed in the wall. So in this big uh, big screen, it will help the workers so they can be uh, always refresh. Always they have uh, something uh, they will help them in order to memorize, in order to remember the process. So if you forget one of the process, so in order to uh, 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 to reduce the waste or to reduce the rework of, of the final product. So they will put the instruction, they will put the procedure and the, and the process for each type of the process, they will put it in the screen. There is a big screen, it will be in the wall. So the worker during the, uh, the move, they can watch and they can please remind uh, or remember uh, the process. This is what we call it by uh, visual aids. So always remember the technique in the exam. There is some keys, point uh, word keys. It has to be in the uh, in the in the uh, question and in the uh, for selection. Once mentioned human errors, in, definitely he will give you the visual aids in the in the choice, or he will give you the visual aids in the question. And he will give you the human errors in the, uh, uh, in, the in the selection. So this is how he is playing uh, with the uh, question. Number four, we have something called the housekeeping. So what what uh, Toyota believe? Toyota believes housekeeping means you need to keep only the necessary item in your work area. Okay. You will remember, we said Toyota, they use uh, the, the, the labor or the worker. They used to have their, their toolkit, okay? Like the bag, they will move from one production line to another production line, okay? So this is uh, make some type of waste. So what Toyota did, the, the the worker or the labor he will be in his place he will not move but the cars they will move and come to him so he will not move so this is uh, one of the way eliminating the waste so what about the tools he is having here there is a many tools he is having screws uh, 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 what we call it a grinder or anything he will have it here with him the main concept of lean we call it the good housekeeping. Housekeeping means you need to keep only the necessary item. If, if the item you will use it, just keep it. If you are not often use it, just put it in the store. No need to keep it with you uh, in the same place uh, uh, or the, way, the area that you are working. Um, also, there is a place for everything. You have to keep like shelves. So if you need a screw, you know where is the shelf is for the screw. You can even put it in the size, size one, size two, size three. So what that means? That means you will uh, eliminate any type of waste for your time to find where is the screw numbers number or uh, size five, where is the screw uh, five, uh, sorry, size 10. If, if it's mixed, how many times you need to pick up one, one screw? So in housekeeping means to keep everything in the place. So make shelves for each type of tools that you are work, uh, that you are using. So uh, keep it in, in, in a proper uh, place. So it will be easy for you to pick up whatever uh, you need. And also that there is everything uh, consists or we, we, we call it read, uh, in the readness. Readness means, uh, immediately you can take it means it is it is re, it is ready uh, ready to be used this is what we means by by readiness so this is a, a concept number four and how it will come in the exam he will give you the good housing or the good uh, housekeeping then he will give you this one in the in the selection keep all is a necessary item on the workplace and there is a place for everything and the 
uh, readings. He will give you one of the three in the selection you have to select one of them. Uh, concept number five. Concept number five, Toyota believes uh, there is a consist of quality management. Uh, the definition of the word quality means, so here, if you if you search about what what the what the, the 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 meaning of the quality, so if you ask anybody what means this product is uh, having a good quality, he will tell you. Uh, for example, you will tell him this is a made in USA and this is a made in China. So definitely he will say, oh, the USA is good quality uh, than Chinese. Uh, Brother, but according to the lean management, according to the Toyota, definitely this is totally wrong. Quality means to meet the customer requirement. Okay, as I mentioned before, if the customer he said I need mobile with two camera, you have to manufacture mobile with two cameras. If he said I need mobile with three cameras, you have to manufacture. A mobile with three cameras. This is what we means by quality, meeting customer requirement. Also, continuous improvement. That's what we mean by uh, quality. You develop a new procedure. You develop a new process. What the quality mean? Quality means since you are in the in the basis of continual improvement for this process, that means you are in a good quality. Also. Uh, quality is not quality is not adding feature or product or service. If I give you a mobile with some kind of defect, okay, I told you there is a two cameras in this mobile. One of them is working. What you will say? Okay, I will give you another one with the third. Uh, I will add another uh, camera. I will give you uh, mobile with the three cameras instead of two. But still, I have one. It's not working. So it, does, it doesn't mean this is a good quality. Which is which is which is mean means good quality is not adding a, a new feature to the to the product or added uh, another service. No. Uh, uh, quality means to meet the customer requirement. Means continuous improvement. Means matching the process and the procedure. Whatever you are, uh, 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 your uh, your uh, uh, final product is, the final product it depends on the process. So if you have a process with the three steps, and you follow that three steps, that means you have a good quality. If you have a process with the five steps, but you only follow four of them, your final product it will be less quality. So this is what what means by quality. Uh, according to the concept of Lean Six Sigma. Uh, concept number three, Toyota believes that Lean is about waste control. And we spoke about there is a, uh, many types of control, we call it Team Woods. So you can go back to that one. So Lean is about waste control or controlling the waste, eliminating the waste, reducing the waste, and increasing or speeding the uh, the complexity, uh, increasing speed for the process, for the uh, uh, manufacturing, for the services, increasing any kind of uh, uh, process and reducing the complexity. So you remember we said there is a, uh, for example, the, the, the flow the flow chart. You have the flow chart with many steps, and then we uh, discuss as uh, as a team. And then we came up with the list, and then we put it in the uh, ERB system. We came up only two or three uh, steps. This is removing or reducing the complexity. Make your process very easy, not a complex. Uh, your procedure is easy to be followed. It's easy even uh, to monitor and, and audit uh, the procedure. So this is what we mean uh, by increasing speed, Increasing the efficiency, uh, increasing the performance for the employee, reducing the complexity, make your process, your procedure very simple. Uh, don't make it uh, uh, a complex.
concept uh, number seven. Uh, concept number seven, we have something called Kanban. So what is a Kanban? Kanban is methodology. Methodology for what? We call it a notification system for communication. Notification system for communication. Uh, they, uh, when, when we will use it, Toyota use this type of, of Kanban when the customer or supplier request additional bar to an internal or external supplier. So if the supplier asks for additional part, there is the PO has been issued from the, from the customer or from the supplier. But there is an additional request for the same PO. So in this case, Toyota, they will use something called Kanban. So what is the Kanban? Let us go for this uh, slide. Okay, the Kanban is like, uh, board they will put in the wall and there is a three uh, columns in that wall which is uh, something you need to do so the, th the thing you need to do you will put it here for example you need to deliver to Aramco so we will put it here deliver to Aramco this is what you, what you need to do so if if you are start, start doing this one, you will take it from here and will move it, you will put it here, which is now I'm doing the delivery. Now the truck in the warehouse has been uh, uploaded the material or loaded the material. So this is doing. So after you finish and um, the driver, he went to Aramco side and deliver. This is, you will move it from here, you will put it here, done. So what is that means? This is a give you indicator for your team. If you are more than one department working in the same process, there is a shared uh, steps between all of you. So anyone who need to identify or he need to know the sales order number 001. What is the situation of this sales order? He can come to the Kanban and just he will observe what is the number. It's still in the doing, column of doing, uh, sorry to do, or it's in doing, it's, it's still they are doing in that uh, SO, or it has been done. So each one, he will go and update the situation for the particular sales order in the Kanban, and he will move the card from one column to another column. Someone again, he will come back and he will check this sales order number 001 where uh, or what is the situation he will go to the kanban and he will see uh, this is has been done done means he will do something else he will he will recheck something else so this is the uh, information is 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 very important for him and kanban he will help you in order to uh, speed up and in order to make your process very uh, very simple this is one sample for uh, uh, Kanban. This guy, he is moving whatever the, the task, he, he should do it. He is moving from one column to the, uh, another column. So this is what we call it, the Kanban. Also, this is one sample for uh, the Kanban. The Kanban, uh, it's a visual workflow, moving from one uh, uh, column to another column. It depends on your company, it depends on your process. You have only one column or three column or your process more than seven column, you can make the seven uh, column. You can put, for example, here you can add uh, in process, uh, for example. So this is one type of the uh, ways or the concept uh, number seven, we call it Kanban. Concept number eight. Toyota believes handling unfamiliar problem with affinity diagram. So what is the affinity diagram? Affinity diagram is similar to the, uh, to the process flow. It is very similar to the process flow. So let, let, me, let me exit this one. <clears throat> I will make it a little bit big. So this is, we call it 
the affinity diagram. Affinity diagram, it is something like uh, the same the same concept of of the process process map are in the same concept of the uh, of the kanban. So it's stick paper or any type of card. You will move it from one uh, uh, one line to another line from from uh, delays. When you put it in the delays, that means something happened. Uh, or you will put it to the team organization or under the uh, integration or something. So this is the same concept of uh, uh, of the Kanban, but Toyota uses this affinity diagram in order to do what? In order to fix or to eliminate the unfamiliar problem. Means, for example, you have one production line and there is a one machine got uh, a failure. There is a failure in the machine. So what they are doing? They are making the decision within the supervision uh, level. So they are not waiting until tomorrow, the manager, he will come or the, the general manager, he will come and then they will sit together and they will discuss and they will get the, uh, the solution. No, uh, Toyota, they will use the affinity diagram in order to fix it uh, right now. We can say they will make a focus group. They will make a brainstorming within the within the same shift so they can come up with this with the solve uh, for that uh, particular problem this is what we call it uh, affinity affinity diagram so why and when toyota they are using affinity diagram in order to handle unfamiliar problem suddenly it's happening it's not used to be uh, something unfamiliar so it is happening for the first time but in the same time, you have big order and you need to take decision right now in order to fix uh, uh, this problem. So in the, in the exam, he will give you the handling unfamiliar problem. You have to find where is the affinity diagram in the uh, selection. Okay. Concept number nine. Concept number nine, this is very... Uh, what we call very interested way. Auditors they are using this way. Five ways means five questions to will ask in order to get the root cause. Okay. Uh, let us go for this example. There is a one one example being used for any type of training for the auditors. Okay. So let us go. Uh, I will come to this slide, but let me finish uh, this sample. So what is this sample? This is a sample for the five whys. Five whys means you will ask why, why, why five times. It depends on the problem you have. Maybe it will be more than five. You will ask seven, 10 questions, uh, whatever, until you get the root cause. So let us discuss this, uh, this example. In 1960, Washington DC official in charge of Jefferson Memorial. This is the statue of the Jefferson, uh, Jefferson Memorial or statue. So this is statue uh, will be damaged by continuously uh, or continuously uh, washing of the bird dropping. So the bird, they are dropping on the statue. So what, what they need, they need to clean it. So if you clean it every day, what is will happen? It will be damaged the statue. So what, what this uh, official in charge he want, to do, uh, he want to do? His plan was to encase the statue with the thin layer of plastic. So he need to cover this statue with the plastic and this is will cost 300, uh, dollars. Okay. For uh, for encasement, there is a two hundred dollar per year for the maintenance. So this plastic case, you need uh, to clean it itself, and this is will cost you two hundred dollar per year. So now what is happening? The auditor he come and he want to ask the official in charge. 
when he want to ask he want to ask uh, five question why he want to ask this five question so in order to get the root cause so he can eliminate the root cause uh, with you remember with the uh, minimum cost and minimum time you remember yesterday we spoke about uh, there is a solution it has to be achievable now uh, without modification and low cost so what the auditor he he will ask now in order to reach this point so what he asked the first question he why in case the statue is in plastic why you need to cover this uh, statue with the uh, with the plastic so what what the uh, uh, official he uh, answered because the consist or content cleaning of the statue will quickly uh, damage the the uh, uh, the statue okay so another question why does it need to clean it so often why every day or every two days three days or every week you need to clean it what is his answer because the birds uh, they are leaving droppings on it the bed is come uh, on the roof so the, the drops is coming on the statue so need to be uh, need to be clean uh, again another question so here we will take you from story to different story why in order in the end to get the correct answer okay why there is no many birds okay the the, the answer is because they are attracting to the to the spider there is a spider inside uh, inside the memorial so there is the bird is coming because there is a spider so the 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 the, the bird can catch the spider and eat it so that's why always the, uh, the the birds coming to the uh, uh, to the memorial again another sword so why another question sorry there is why there is a many spider now we move from the bird to the spider why there is a many spider what is the uh, answer because spider are, uh, are uh, uh, coming or moving after the flies so the fly is coming uh, in the night from the from the basin there is a basin here you can see this basin here so the fly is coming from here to the memorial so again there is a one question okay so why are there is a many uh, flies why there is a many flies the answer is because flies attract the light uh, on the memorial at the night so once the light is on the uh, uh, the fly is coming uh, to the memorial so once the fly is coming to the memorial what is happening the spider is coming to follow uh, the, the uh, to follow the the flies and when there is a spider the bird is coming for the spider so what what need to do again another question why is the light attracting the fly to the statue so why is uh, there is another another uh, light why only the light for the memorial is attracting this flight this is the answer because the first light starts uh, after the dark so here here is the point once once uh, uh, before the dark the first uh, light start is the light of the memorial okay so what that means that means once they start for the for the dark uh, for the for the light the fly is coming uh, by attracting to the light and then a spider coming after the flies and then the bird come after the spider and then the bird dropping uh, on the statue and then he need to cover by plastic and this cover by plastic will cost three hundred dollars you see one by one by so what the auditor did the auditor he bought a device with only two dollars why to delay the statue light until 30 minutes after the dark so what 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 will happen here there is another uh, another location 
okay there is another uh, uh, memorial or another any place uh, around this uh, uh, statue or memorial what will happen this this auditor he he bought uh, a device with a two dollar what the device will delay the light so since you delay the light 30 minutes where is the fly will go fly they will go to the first light which is the where is the first light some some uh, some area out of this location so the fly they will fly out so we go to the other location what will happen you will not have any spider uh, in the in the statue or the memorial because the spider what will do also the spider will follow the flies so uh, so now you get the spider out so there is there is no uh, anything will come or there is no anything will attract the bird so if the bird also move from this memorial that means there is no dropping on the statue so in this case you will keep the statue clean no need to pay uh, extra money uh, for uh, uh, protecting the uh, the statue so this is one example of the five uh, whys and how you will use the five whys this is very interesting guys okay uh, as i mentioned i want to go back there is a one uh, yeah uh, toyota Toyota, they are using something uh, called TBS. TBS, which is the Toyota production system. So what is the Toyota production system? Okay. Worker discover, discover the rules and consequences of the solving problem facilities uh, by super, uh, supervisor using the Socrates method. We, so what is the Socrates method? Socrates method, uh, this is the Greek, I think Greek philosophy. His name is Socrates. So Socrates, he's having some method of uh, discovering the problem. So what is this method? This method, it will tell, don't tell the labor, this is the error or this is a mistake, but let him discover the mistake by himself. But in order to do this one, you need to uh, uh, to give him training so this is what toyota is doing so to toyota production system or tbs they are working on this area they are teaching their uh, labors or their manpower about the socrates method so socrates method is about discovering uh, uh, uh discovering the the consequence or discovering the errors discovering the mistake uh, by supervision or by observing or by trying to do himself so the labor he don't need any type of or he don't need any someone to tell him hey this is a mistake and you have to avoid this mistake but uh, according to the to the knowledge that he have according to the uh, training that has been uh, given to him he will discover the problem himself and he will try to eliminate it. okay I have something also I, uh, I remember uh, forget to mention in some fact of uh, the project uh, Six Sigma. So there is a primary reason uh, for periodic or project review. So only to review uh, the schedule and the cost. So during your project, you will have period for checking or recheck. You will have period for review. You want to review uh, are you going to the to the uh, correct path are you going to target you will achieve your target or not so why we will do this one because of two two reason you need uh, to review your schedule you remember there is a milestone milestone we said we will put for example define we will start from this date to this date measure from this date to this date so you need to review your schedule also you need to review the cost so if you have a more time, that means you will have a more cost. One month enough for you? No, it's not enough for me. I need another one month. That uh, means you will have, or you will need uh, another cost. Uh, this table, I put it here just to, uh, to remember. Maybe it will come in the exam. Uh, you remember uh, what we call is the percentage yield or the accuracy, the accuracy for the uh, six segment okay uh here this is a, that is out of the box this is i brought it because i saw it some question in the exam 
is coming from this area. So I make my own uh, research and come up with something. We have a demand. Everybody knows the demand, correct? We know the demand. There is a something called DMADV. D M A D V. What is this? This is define, measure, analyze. Still, we are going the same, but you will go back to the define. And the last phase is verify, not control. Instead of control, you will make verify. When I will use the demandive, when I will use the, uh, the map. I will use the demandive if I'm going for a new process. If I'm going to design a new process, I will go for uh, demandive. If I have current process, no need to invent, no need to come up with a new process, I will use our uh, uh, popular one, which is uh, the map. Okay, guys, this is the last point I want to talk about. I want to talk, uh, uh, talk about the certificate. Inshallah, next week we will join uh, the international exam. So your certificate will be having a console of Six Sigma, okay, uh, accreditation. And the console of Six Sigma is based on USA. We will have also uh, a CBD, which is uh, 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 UK uh, Ministry of Education. This is accreditation for the 20 hour uh, of the course. We have the International uh, Quality Federation based on USA. Also, it will be accreditation in your uh, certificate. So this is the three uh, accreditation you need. So in order to have this three accreditation you need, you need to have an uh, institute who is having this accreditation. So which this institute in our area is we call it IMC. IMC Institute is uh, based on uh, Abu Zabi. This is a near to us, uh, near one for us in order to have a Six Sigma certificate. So your certificate will be from uh, IMC with the accreditation of the International Quality Federation, with the accreditation of co uh, uh, Consul of Six Sigma, and also will be having uh, another certificate. So your uh, yellow belt will be two certificates, actually not only one, one for the CBD and one for six, uh, Lean Six Sigma uh, certificate. Okay, guys. We have done Six Sigma Yellow Build. We are now ready for the uh, international exam. What we will do now, uh, I have internal exam made by me. So we will do it here on uh, Sunday. So Sunday, 12 o'clock, I will send you the link for our own exam. This is internal. This is my exam. Okay. This is for what? Just to prepare you to have the idea about how the international exam will be, how the question it will come and how the choice it will come and how you can uh, uh, pass uh, the exam. Okay. Before that, I'm going to send the hundred question. Okay. This hundred question, it will what twenty of them will be in the exam. By the way, your exam is twenty question. Okay. You have a certain minute to finish this 20 question. I will give you 100 question. Okay. From this 100, you will have a 20 in the exam. Yes, you need to study this 100 question uh, very carefully. Uh, I will give you all the material for uh, to help you. I will give you the 100 question uh, the same way you have it yesterday. Another way I will give you, I will give you the question, okay, with uh, uh, four uh, choices. I will give you the slides where is the answer for the question, and then I will give you the answer down. So you can read the question, you can read the four uh, choices. You go to the slides, you will find the answer here. You need to answer it here, and then you can test your answer here. I will give you the correct answer. Okay, guys. Can you keep it for Monday instead of Sunday? Sorry? 
can you keep this for monday instead of sunday also that should be no your voice is very uh, it's not clear yes come 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 to the mic keep, can you keep this for monday monday yeah okay no issue yeah monday is better right? so we will send our own exam the internal one on monday yeah okay guys okay. yes okay so international exam one we need to be the following day or we we'll keep it wednesday or keep a gap for some time well, after one week no one week we have the inventory i have to leave get that so before that i want to be sure you are 100% uh yeah because only only the week we have only one week because uh Saturday the last day one we will start week, the week. Week, week will be very busy for us so i think if you give one week gap that would be better uh gap see if if you if you took a big gap then you will start to uh, forget now you you are fresh you have the information uh, even if if you not read the 100 uh, question just from the lecture you can get some or you can catch some Uh, answers but if you make it a big period then you will start uh, forgetting and this is not good for you so i i i uh, i suggest we will finish it within the, the next week this is even the last last uh, uh, group or the arab group they did the same and they all of them passed the exam so just keep it fresh keep it immediately uh, take it from the fire and eat it uh, ala tool hot cake <laughs> hot cake yeah yeah it's hot it's hot is good <laughs> correct guys okay yeah okay let's see let's uh, let us finish the other test then we'll decide kalas okay. okay okay and uh, thank you very much brother it was a great uh, training you are welcome you are welcome it was a great uh, i hope this will be beneficial for the company and beneficial for us as individuals Inshallah, inshallah. Inshallah. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you guys. Thank you guys.